My name is Mike Brocky, and I am here to tell you how to kick your components up a notch with directives. Bam! Uh, that's a play to old school, well not old school, but I'm a little bit older, uh, to Food Network, to Emerald Lagasse, so that'll play to the talk a little bit. Um, so surprisingly, I'm not here to talk about the CLI, I'm here to talk about directives. So as you start with your Angular development career, you jump right in and you first create your component and great and you get rolling and you want to build out your application. So you keep on adding more components and you say, all right, wait, this is great. I'm gonna build my component tree and then you add more components. But where do you go from there? So you have your component and you have some logic built within your component, but you don't really, you wanna be able to reuse that logic. So we all learned from either an Angular JS or once we got to Angular, to refactor that logic out into a service, which is great, because now we have reusable uh, logic elsewhere, not necessarily stored within your component. But what happens in your component if you have some behaviors that you would like to be able to replicate and use things elsewhere? You wanna be able to refactor those things out, but where do they go? What do you do with them? Well, the answer is directives. Uh, I think directives are actually underused in Angular, um, with the current versions. AngularJS, they were used quite heavily, how you manipulated the DOM. Uh, similar practice here, uh, but here we're gonna focus on the Angular versions. So there's three different types of directives. Uh, the first of which are attribute-based directives. Uh, for example, ng class is an example, you add an attribute to a uh, element and you get additional behaviors to that element. Another one is structural. Uh, so ng4 and ng if are good example, examples of those. And the last one is components. Components, yes, are actually built upon directives. So everything that a directive can do, or a component can do, a directive can do, uh, sans the template. Um, but today we're just gonna focus on the attribute-based ones. You'll see examples online if you wanna see recreations of how do you re-implement ng4, how do you re-implement ngf, which are great. You can take a look at those and understand a little bit more of the under the hood scene of what's going on there, but there's really no practical usage for that. So we're gonna focus on the attribute-based ones that you can use and create within your applications and possibly share within your applications as well. So, we're just getting started with directives. How do you actually declare them and how do you use them? So I have some very, 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 very basic examples of usage with uh, directives. So here I've created a blink directive. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're bringing the blink, not the blink tag, a blink attribute back. So you notice here with the selector, uh, it's based off of having an attribute of blink on an element. And in here we're using something called host binding. And what host binding does, it gives you the ability to modify different properties on an element, of the host element that you have applied your directive onto. In this case here, I'm looking at the hidden directive. So I have this element here, and I would like it to blink because I want my application to be fancy. So I just sprinkle that on there, bam, and I got my blink tag, or blink attribute added to that tag, and we just apply it by adding it onto the DOM element, and there we see the happy little blinking text uh, within our application. So we've done nothing to the component itself. In fact, it wasn't even a component, just a div tag, and we've added behaviors onto that just by adding an attribute. But that's great and we can use that, but it doesn't really have a whole lot of practical usage, unless of course you want blinking text on your screen. But you wanna be able to pass values into that. So how do we go about doing that with a directive? So I've created another one called Bling, which will uh, just be, or, yeah, it's called Bedazzle. Uh, and it's activated by a Bling attribute. Uh, and it takes an input, just like you would with a component. Again, components are built on directives, so we can specify an input, in which case we're taking in color here. And we're using the host binding, except instead of binding to a, a native element or native property, it's a child element. So on the style property, we're accessing the color attribute there or property, and anytime we return a value from this function, it will overwrite the style color of the uh, DOM element that it's applied to. Again, it's returning the input that we're uh, taking above uh, to be able to set that value. Again, we have just a few different uh, DOM elements. We sprinkle on our directive, bam, uh, and also the input values to be able to pull that in uh, to set the values. So we apply the attribute, 
supply the uh, values that we want to see within there, and we see that those render the different colors into the uh, UI in the browser. So now we've looked at how do you activate them and also how do you get values in, which is great, except we want some additional behaviors, right? So you want to be able to handle different events uh, within your directives. So I created another, again, uh, raw example uh, called Color Cycle. And what it's going to do is it's going to iterate different colors as you click on the element. So again, we're using host binding to, uh, based off of uh, style.color. And here it's using a method called uh, set in the text color. But we also have something called host listener. So host binding allows you to get values out of different properties. And host listener allows you to listen to different events on the uh, element that you're binding to or your directive is applied to. Uh, here we're listening to the click event with a function called onClick. And there's another, I'll just show it here, uh, met, uh, function in here called getNextColor, which is just an implementation which will cycle through an array of colors uh, defined somewhere else in the uh, directive, which is just going to set the text color, and then that appears. So we have that in here. We want to cycle the colors on this element here, sprinkle our little directive on here, and bam, that appears. And we get to see, as you click on an element, it will just cycle through those colors. So we've now applied different behaviors, listened to events, and been able to pass values in. That just gives us just about everything we need to implement multiple different things um, externally to components. The last piece um, is exposing events. You want, when things happen, uh, when you've applied a directive, you'd like to maybe let the component or any other elements know that something has happened. So we're gonna take that uh, color cycle um, directive that was on the previous slides, and we're just gonna extend that a little bit. So in here, I've added an event emitter, uh, which is based off of an output, just as you would on a component. Again, components are built on directives. Uh, so the same uh, principles apply. So we're gonna emit an event anytime that the color is changed. So maybe uh, whatever uh, usage you have, we're just letting the parent component know w that something has happened. So on init, again, lifecycle event, that we want to set this up on an initialization, that we're just gonna emit out the initial value. So just spitting out the initial text color of the property of the directive. We have a host listener. We're gonna handle whenever you click on the uh, DOM element. And here we're just also, the only additional change within here is we're also gonna re-emit that value out so the consumers of this directive can take advantage of that event. So in here we have the HTML that is consuming it as well as a little bit of component code down below. So we, I've renamed the, it's a kind of a copy because I'll push up the repo for you guys to take a look at later on. Uh, but the color cycle event is the uh, attribute that it's based off of. We've added an, a listener here to the color changed event. And we are handling that event. And just for simplicity, rather than throwing it to a log where we can't see easily, just binding and showing the color down below of what was emitted out. And that's just handled in the component on the color changed event uh, to set the color. So as you can see in here, you click on the uh, DOM element. And as you click on it, the colors change. And you're getting the event passed out with the colors on there. So now I think we've covered everything that we need. We can add new behaviors, take values in, handle events internally, and expose different events out. Which gives us a, a pretty powerful platform to do a lot of different things with, uh, within your application. So these are all great little examples. We've changed colors and we've made things blink, but that's not really practical. Uh, within our application. We want to be able to do more. So what's, uh, I've created an example and we'll walk through that. But the example is I have a security service. Your authorization, your authentication of what different roles a user would have. And this is common in many different applications because people can do different things within your applications. So typically what we'll do is we'll take that security service and we need to use it within a component. So we will use dependency injection to get that in there. Very common because we've uh, refactored out our logic into a service. But now, in order to use that, we need to have security logic, or security and logic. So we need to know what permissions you need to use a, a uh, particular element, and logic uh, to how do I apply that, the information from my security service to the DOM elements within inside that component. But not only that, we need to then replicate that same logic 
in all of our other components that have different behaviors uh, to be able to turn different elements on and off. So the better, better solution is instead of having that logic duplicated everywhere else, let's use directives. And let's quote from me. So again, we're gonna take our security service. Uh, as we've already created, there really needs to be no different changes there because we've refactored out that logic. So we have re logic refactored out. And we're gonna inject that into a directive instead. And then we can take that directive and apply it to your component without having that additional logic, without having to worry about any of the other implementation details, just drop a directive onto your component or multiple components and be able to use that same behavior in multiple uh, components. So let's take a look at how we actually go about doing this. I've created a um, more practical directive here called lockdown because it's going to uh, be activated based off of the lockdown um, attribute here and also um, a few different local private properties. I'm keeping track of a subscription uh, to a observable, an input to be able to pass in values uh, to it, and you'll notice here that the selector and the input are both named lockdown. That is completely legal, uh, so you can pass values in based off of the selector that, act that activates your uh, component, especially for attributes. Uh, classes, not so much, but with an attribute, you can specify the value being the same thing as the selector. And then I'm also injecting in my uh, security service here via dependency injection. Uh, inside that directive, um, we have some lifecycle hooks to take care of on init. I am subscribing, or I'm getting the roles from the security service, and I am setting to a local value or a variable inside of my user roles. And then I am also destroying that and unsubscribing uh, just to clean up uh, some memory management to make sure that we unsubscribe to anything that we do subscribe to. And we have a host binding, and here I'm binding to the disabled property. So buttons, links, and uh, other elements uh, within the DOM uh, have the disabled property. We're just basically overriding that. And there's just logic in there that is going to go through and determine whether or not a user has a role that's being passed in. It takes in an array of uh, strings, or excuse me, a string array of different roles that the user has to have in order to utilize that. And we're just returning out, it's kind of a negation, so disabled is if they don't have the role, it'll be disabled. And bam, we have that implementation there. And I'm just gonna go through real quick, and I have that up and running here. I didn't write any CSS for this, as you can see. Uh, all the other examples are here, so this is all within the, um, uh, will be in the repo that I'll post up uh, later today. Uh, but if we are assigning roles, and that's just a different uh, component up here to be able to specify that we have the guest uh, role, you'll see that this one gets activated, as well as the user. As you give Grant that role, then the user um, role will get activated as well. And then also the admin role. And as you disable those, those get in. So we've now completely extracted that behavior of locking down different DOM elements based off of uh, directives, rather than having that logic completely within a component. I think that didn't end up in my slide deck, so I'm gonna just show that right here. And that is just right here. So we have buttons, and in order to lock down the guest action, you're basically specifying that as long as you have the guest role that is being um, applied there, uh, with no additional code in the component whatsoever. It's all re been refactored as a behavior outside of your components. And what I wanna leave you with today is the idea of, most people I don't think are taking advantage of directives, but there's a lot that you can do with them, and I hope that you explore the different ideas of what you can do with directives with the examples you've seen today of how you can expand your logic and your behaviors and your application using them. So thank you for your time today.